What is going on guys? It's King Touch Pro back with another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Guys, in today's tutorial, I want to teach you guys how to use keyframes or keyframing or I guess you should call it a keyframing tutorial. Now, I will do my best to explain how to use keyframes, how to animate things in general. I already made a tutorial on that a couple of videos ago if you guys want to check that out or you can go in the description and click on the link and watch it. But uh, in this tutorial, that's what I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do is just how to use keyframes because I get that question asked a lot and I haven't actually done a full on tutorial on how to actually do keyframes. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that in this tutorial. Now, uh, I'm sorry if I haven't been posting videos, um, you know, yesterday. Um, I've just been so busy with Christmas shopping and all that stuff. So please forgive me, guys. Um, give me, you know, a couple of days here and there where I might not upload. But without, you know, without further ado, I will try to upload at least five days of this week without without any issue. This is a short clip here, or I guess I should call the whole clip from Samantha Harvey's Ed Sheeran Perfect cover. She's a really, really talented girl. She's really good at singing and stuff, which is awesome. I would suggest you guys watch her videos and subscribe to her. A link will be down in the description. But be sure to subscribe to her and leave a like. Um, her videos are just awesome. So I decided to go ahead and just use this as an example to, you know, use keyframes. So when you're using keyframing, you want to make sure that in your timeline, whenever you're adding effects or anything related to animating or animation, I would suggest you guys check out Ryan Engel's channel. His channel is, he's like the go-to guy for transitions and he's really good with that. In this case, I'm going to go here and... This is only one 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 way to use keyframes. So, so I want to follow her left arm. So I'm going to drag this here. I'm going to drag the title there. And I'm going to go into the inspector window. And in the inspector window, you're going to have a whole bunch of properties here. This might look different uh, depending on what plugin or whatever text or picture or whatever you use, you're using. In this case, I'm only using this Instagram pop thing, which was nice. Um, you can use anything else. It doesn't have to be this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to... I'm going to change it to her name. So Samantha Harvey. And then I'm going to go into the video here and we're going to go into the transform option. As you notice, you'll have little triangles with or diamond icons, whatever, with a plus icon. And that is a keyframe. A keyframe is just pretty much a starting point or an ending point. This is all up to you. Okay. Now you guys can go online and buy plugins and do this all for you. You know, especially when it comes to tracking, this would be consider tracking the only problem with that is that it's really expensive it costs you know a hundred dollars or probably less but let's say you don't want to spend that kind of money and you're only working on one project then you might as well use this and that's kind of the reason I want to show you guys how to do keyframes so uh, let's go ahead and just start so we're gonna go here and I want it to I'm gonna go a frame in so I can see the actual animation there and I'm going to go on to the position because the position, this is what will allow you to move the actual animation. But we can't do anything without adding a um, kind of call it like a pin. You want to pin it to the video. So I'm going to click on this plus icon and you're going to notice now that the kind of diamond icon with an X appears, which means you can get rid of it or you can add it again. Now, just, a lot of people will get confused like let's say okay now I want it to move over here well that's not how it works you need some space between one keyframe and another we have one keyframe set but nothing's happening because we need to move the time ahead a couple of frames over so in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm not instead of going to the end I want it to track her arm so we've already added the first keyframe and it's gonna animate just like that now let's say we want it to start here um, it's going to start there because we haven't added another keyframe. So nothing's happening yet. So that is great. So here we go. Okay. Now we can go back to the, if we click on this again, you're going to have this. All you have to do literally is just go one frame over by pressing the right arrow key or the left arrow key. Now, once you press the right arrow key, you want to move it slightly. Okay. That will automatically add a keyframe. And if you don't see it, right click on your text and go to show video animation. Sweet. So you can see what's going on here. We have two keyframes. I don't know why I have two, um, but I'll just leave it like how it is. And now you can see there's two keyframes. There's and it's one frame and you can see how it moves because we added another keyframe. So now we're going to go one frame over and she barely moves. So there's no point in adding a keyframe there. But if the movement is dramatic, 
then you might want to add more keyframes. It just depends on the video that you have. So I'm going to move again. I might move it a little bit down just like that. And you can see it automatically adds a keyframe for you. Final Cut Pro 10 is just that smart. Now, let's say you don't want it in this place. Instead of going back and undoing everything, you can just literally click and drag this to different keyframes, which is really nice. So I'm going to go one frame over once again. I'm going to drag it left just a bit. And now keep in mind, the closer the keyframes are to each other, the faster the movement or the animation will turn out. If these keyframes were to be further apart, like let's say this one's over here and over here and over here, that's going to be a very slow animation and it will look smoother, but it just won't look as good. So just kind of play around with that. So let's go here and here. I might move it up a little bit. I'm going to move it up like that and something like that. She's barely moving here. And go a couple of frames more up. So it will go away just like that. So now you can see how this looks with all of the keyframes added. So now if I push play, you're going to have something like that. Now, eh, it, looks, it looks pretty good. Kind of over here, since they're so close to each other, it kind of gives you that jaggedy look. But as you can see, once they're spread out, it looks a lot smoother and a lot cleaner. Now, another cool thing you can use with keyframes is music. So a lot of you guys, and I'll do a music tutorial on Monday, probably Tuesday. But if I go ahead and re-enable this audio, right here, it's going into the reds, which is not good. But with keyframes, we can fix that. So if you go into the inspector, we click this little keyframe button, you will see that now we've added a keyframe. We're going to add another keyframe. So now we have two on the left and two on the right. Click plus one more time. Now go ahead and just make this closer to each other and drag this down. So now this will allow you to easily fade the audio from it being so loud to not as loud. So let's say we want to dramatically change the, we want to make it black and white. Okay. So to do that, there is an option of obviously just cutting it and just adding a black and white here, or we want to gradually make it black and white. That's what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it here. Well, first go ahead and look that up, black and white, drag it on your video. Once you apply an effect, okay, and you right click and you go to show video animation, you're going to have a new effects here and you're going to have the black and white amount. If you click this little down arrow, you can see all of the keyframes, the amount or color if you did any color adjustments. In this case, I am working with color, but you can see how we have black and white, which is this. Then we're working with the amount. So the amount is what we want to work on. Um, if you were to change the color, and we can also add a, a keyframe to that color, it will add it here as well. And I'll show you guys both of those. So the amount right now, I want to start it like this. I want it to start with color. So I'm going to add a keyframe. We added our first keyframe. We're going to go a couple of frames over. And I want it to be smooth. So I don't want it to cut really quickly. So let's see how this looks. So... It's going to fade into black and right there is where I want it to fade back to black. So if I go back to the amount and I increase this all the way to 100 and I go back, you're going to see how this is going to change from color to black and white. Maybe it's too slow. All you got to do is click and drag this closer to each other. So now if I push play, you're going to see how much faster that turned, which is nice, right? Now, another thing you can do, which is what I like personally, is to change instead of seeing all um, let me show you. So we have black and white, and then we can change the color. We can click on this. You can change the reds. Um, since it's in black and white, there's really no point in changing these values. It will only change the highlights, midtones, or shadows. But if it was in color, you, could, you guys can do that. So let's say we were to choose something a little brighter like that, and we click on the plus icon, and we add another one. And let's say we went to red. Any any changes you make, uh, Final Cut Pro 10 automatically adds a keyframe. So now you can see if I push play, the values are changing in here, as you can see, which is nice, right? So instead of seeing all of the keyframes and not knowing which keyframes are which, just go to this down arrow and go to, let's say we only wanted to change the amount. And it will just show you the keyframes that you've changed from the amount, which is here. Or let's say you wanted to work with just the color adjustments with the keyframes, it will go with those. So that is a nice thing you can do. Now, this is only one of thousands of ways to use keyframes. I can't literally show you everything. Um, now, a lot of 
uh, a lot of you guys tell me that you guys can go like let's say you wanted to you wanted to scale it up so like to do that's super easy all you have to do is go to transform go into scale click this plus icon go a couple of frames over and literally just make it bigger now if i push play it will go ahead and get a little bit bigger as you can see now when it comes to this stuff it might be ideal to just honestly go to the transform option go to crop and go to Ken Burns and do the exact same thing. So I want it to start from here and end there and it will do the same thing. But the thing is, it's gonna apply it to the whole video. So that's kind of like the main difference when it comes to keyframes is that you can control it more or the Ken Burns is that you're gonna have to manually cut it to actually make it work with just that clip um, as you can see. So. That's the difference between using these and keyframes. I personally like keyframes a lot more because it's more flexible. If you guys found this tutorial helpful, be sure to leave a like. That'd be awesome. If you guys want daily videos, comment down below, turn on the bell notification, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.